A very warm welcome to all of you to this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. And now, having discussed uh, results from linear algebra and having discussed complex numbers, in this lecture, we will discuss a very important result in linear algebra. Actually, this should be one important result. So, one result in linear algebra. So, we will discuss one important result for linear algebra and discuss its uh, implications for our purposes. So, here we are talking about or this result, this result pertains to the space of symmetric trick matrices for real valued matrices and Hermitian matrices in case of complex valued matrices. So, let us first define what are uh, Hermitian and uh, symmetric and Hermitian matrices. So, a matrix S for simplicity, S is called symmetric uh, real valued matrix S n times n matrix or rather n, n times n. So, a square matrix square real valued matrix S is called symmetric if S transpose equals S or if you exchange the corresponding column elements with the, the row elements they remain the same or so if you have a matrix and if you exchange the entries that are or you could say that the entries on either side of the principal diagonal are mirror images of this is uh, when you call a square real valued matrix a symmetric and this is called a Hermitian matrix. So, S matrix if S Hermitian equals S that is entries on either side of the diagonal are complex conjugates of each other or a Hermitian matrix matrix is invariant under the Hermitian operator. Hermitian matrix is invariant under the Hermitian operator. So, if A is a Hermitian matrix, so the result that uh, we want to emphasize over here is that if A is a Hermitian matrix, then its eigenvectors form an orthonormal basis or uh, unitary basis for the corresponding n dimensional complex space. So, let us also define what is a unitary basis. So, basis of well, real value space 
a matrix U is set to form orthonormal basis of the space if any vector x the n dimensional space can be represented as a of the columns of u i e x in a k k goes from 1 to capital n and u hermitian u equals identity equals u u hermitian so oh sorry u transpose u u transpose u equals identity equals u u transpose so the columns of u are orthogonal to each other and they are normal obviously they have unit norm so they are orthogonal to each other and the columns of u can be used to represent any vector in the n dimensional space that is when you call U to form, you say that u forms an orthogonal basis for the n dimensional space. So, similarly, in case we have complex valued Hermitian symmetric matrix or a complex valued matrix u, we say that it forms the basis of an n dimensional complex space if any complex vector can be represented. So, let me do this for so complex. Shall form an unitary. It is said to form a unitary basis for the n-dimensional complex space if any vector can be represented as a linear combination of the columns of U for all So, this is called a, a unitary matrix. Now, coming back to our result. So, the result states that if A is a Hermitian symmetric matrix, then its eigenvectors form an orthonormal basis of the corresponding n-dimensional complex space. So, if A is Hermitian, then the eigenvectors of A form a basis, an orthonormal basis of the n-dimensional complex space. That is, the eigenvectors that are defined like this form an orthonormal basis. Fine. So, that said, let us add another slide and uh, see what this means. So, I will add a slide here and so which means that A u i equals lambda u i or A u equals u lambda, but since u is unitary u Hermitian u equals identity or u inverse equals u Hermitian. So, pre multiplying 1 on both sides by u Hermitian we get u Hermitian a u equals lambda or a equals u lambda u so, this is the result that we have. So, this is a Sanskrit phrase which means, so what? So, what? We have this result, so what? So, let us uh, try to use this result once and uh, see what happens. So, suppose I want to calculate A square. So, now A square can be written as A times A which means u lambda u Hermitian times u lambda u Hermitian. So, 
this I know is the identity matrix. So, this becomes u lambda square u Hermitian and in general it is easy to show that a to the power n can be written as u lambda to the power n u Hermitian. So, again so what? So, how does this help us? So, we said that or uh, early in this course in the first chapter we had declared that uh, we want to preserve the floating point operations or uh, we want to form algorithms that uh, use as little as floating point operations as possible. So, since we want to minimize the number of floating point operations that we have let us look at uh, this. So, a matrix multiplication so, multiplying 2 n times n matrices would mean that we calculate n square. So, we had said that we can reduce a matrix multiplication to series of inner products. So, calculate n square entries each as an inner product of vectors of length n which means that uh, each uh, inner product would be requiring n floating point operations and we are doing n square such operations. So, we will be requiring n cube operations per uh, matrix multiplication or every time we want to multiply a matrix with itself we require order of n cube op operations. Similarly, MATLAB requires order of n cube complex multiplications or uh, floating point operations for calculating eigenvalue decomposition. So, if you want to calculate a to the power n what you would do is so and lambda to the power n is simply n n times. So, if I follow the direct approach that is I calculate a to the power n by multiplying a with itself n times I get I get n n cube complex multiplications, but if I use Eigen decomposition what I will have is n cube for the initial Eigen decomposition then I will have n times n for raising the eigenvalues to power the corresponding eigenvalues to power n and then another n cube or 2 n cube for getting a to the power n from u lambda to the power n u Hermitian. So, this saves me computations, but uh, is that all? No, this is not all we can apply it or there are more fun ways of doing this. So, that said basically what we are doing is we can represent can represent any polynomial of the matrix A given by P A as u p lambda or u Hermitian fine. So, using that argument we since we can represent any arbitrary power of the matrix with uh, this representation we can also represent any arbitrary polynomial of the matrix with this representation and which can make the computation of any matrix polynomial easily using uh, the Eigen decomposition that is one result and equivalently since we can represent the exponentiation operation also as a polynomial operation. So, because of that we can uh, define the matrix exponentiation operation for symmetric matrices like this. So, this is we can define 
the exponentiation operation for a symmetric matrix or a Hermitian symmetric matrix. This is the corresponding MATLAB command like this. Obviously, since there is the matrix exponentiation, there is the notion of matrix logarithms as well. So, I can define the logarithm of a symmetric matrix or a Hermitian matrix which is another Hermitian matrix like this. So, MATLAB command is log m this and there is also the idea of matrix square root. So, since a equals u lambda u Hermitian, I can say the square root of a should be such that say let b equals the square root of a. Then a equals b square. So, let b equals u lambda to the power half u Hermitian. Then b square equals u lambda lambda half lambda half u equals Hermitian equals a. So, I can also define the square root of a or for that matter we can, I can define any arbitrary power of a of a matrix using uh, this result. So, this result is useful in uh, calculating a lot of arbitrary functions of a. So, let us demonstrate this in MATLAB. So, let us say that I have a matrix a that is given by 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 5 or 2, 4, 5 and 3, 5, 9. So, this you see is a symmetric matrix, fine. So, since this is a symmetric matrix, just find out whether this is rank deficient. This is a full rank matrix which is a good thing. So, determinant of A is this minus fine, does not hurt us. So, let us u equals or the eigen decomposition of A. So, this gives me the eigen decomposition of A. So, first let me check whether u is uh, orthonormal. So, u conjugate u or u Hermitian u which gives me the identity matrix. Then I will check for u u Hermitian which gives me the identity matrix again. So, which means that uh, this is orthonormal then u lambda u Hermitian. This gives me the original matrix back u Hermitian a u sorry u Hermitian lambda u. Uh, so, sorry this gives me the eigenvalue matrix back. So, this and these are the basic checks. Now, let me calculate a square. This is a square and uh, let me do this. So, I get the same result. Naturally, I can calculate the nth power. This is too big a number. So, let me call calculate the fifth power. So, this is the fifth power which is fine and if I try to find out the fifth power of A, similar results and uh, suppose I define the matrix logarithm of A, I calculate the matrix logarithm of A and obviously there is the, the matrix exponential of this and that I can find as So, the matrix exponential and obviously, I would be interested in finding the matrix square root as well. So, square root of A is this, this is the matrix square root and uh, this is the corresponding matrix square root and uh, so let me call this as B. So, this I define as the matrix square root. So, B times B equals A. 
b times b equals a which is the metric square root. So, we have uh, used that uh, basic uh, result from linear algebra to show all these interesting results with matrices. We will uh, stop here now and in the next lecture we will look at uh, some more matrix operations and uh, inversion, the idea of matrix inversion and after that uh, we will move on to signals which will be the last topic for this chapter. So, thank you. Thank you.